Okay, so today we're doing a video on uh, flueless gas fires. The idea being um, you can watch this and see whether your gas engineer is doing his job properly when he services it. I know I do a load of guides on how to do it yourself. This is not one of them. Um, this is purely so that, um, well, put it this way, flueless gas fires um, are quite often viewed quite badly by gas engineers that don't like them. Um, bear in mind that in America they've had these for years and years and years, there's been no problems, but um, in this country a lot of people don't like them. Anyway, so I'm just going to show you what he should be doing, how he should be checking it so that you can watch and you can just make sure the guy you've got doing the job is doing it properly. Now, they're pretty much the same as any other gas appliance. You need to check the safety devices, the ventilation and the amount of heat input that the thing's using. So basically, how much gas is it flowing? There's a few more bits, but there's no chimney to check. Okay, so first of all, what the engineer should be doing is he should be checking the overall condition of the appliance. He should be checking, obviously I've taken the glass off the front here so I can show you easier. He should be checking to make sure there's no signs of distress, there's no carbon on the top. He should be looking just to check that the catalytic converters you can see up there are nice and clean and white or brownish. Checking, running it just to check the flame picture is nice and even. There isn't some sort of long tapered on, you know, strange flame on one end or, you know, in different places. Um, and just generally the overall sort of, um, you know, whether there's been any sooting or anything like that. Now then, um, these things are designed so that the front piece of glass, I'll try and do this without dropping it, the front piece of glass is sort of semi-enclosed. So what this is doing is this is covering the front like this and it goes all the way to the bottom and you can see there's a seal down here but it doesn't extend to the very bottom, it just extends up the sides. That's just to make sure and channel all the products of combustion that leave, oh God, that leave the, um, the burner, actually make it up and make it through the catalytic converter. Okay, all of these will be equipped with an oxypilot. Um, now an oxypilot is this little thing down here. Now what that oxypilot does is, let me get a little pointing device, it's got two little flames. One goes that way and touches the thermocouple to keep the, um, to keep the, 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 the gas valve open. And one comes forward this way to light the main burner. Now, an oxypilot is designed so that if there isn't enough oxygen in the room, what it will do is this little flame will just curl upwards like that, curl up and it won't touch the, uh, the thermocouple, so the whole thing will go out. Now, so on a good service, what the guy needs to be doing is he needs to be checking the pilot to make sure that it's got a good pilot and it's going out nice and strong. If it isn't, there's a tiny little hole. It's, it's very difficult to see, uh, but I can show you. That's why this is not fitted. I can actually show you. This one is hidden away on the back, and you can just see on the side of the pilot assembly down there, there's a little hole. Now, if that hole is obscured by lint or anything like that, which it quite easily does, um, then the pilot won't work very well and you'll have nuisance lockout. Okay, next thing is the engineer needs to clean the burner, make sure it's nice and clean. Obviously, brush away any debris here. Then what he's doing is he's checking the gas rating of the appliance. That's to make sure it's not using too much or too little gas, not for a, an economy point of view, but as you can imagine, those catalytic converters up there can only handle a certain amount of flame. So he needs to make sure that it's actually burning the right amount of gas. Very easy to do. There's a little data plate hidden away. This one's here. And it tells you how much, um, how much gas the appliance should be using, or what burner pressure it should be at, is the, the, the more sort of the, the industry term in this case. Now, <clears throat> your engineer will usually be using one of these, it's a U gauge, um, it's just a water gauge, and it'll be connected onto the test point. In this case, it's here. So what he'll be doing is he'll be checking the pressure from here on his gauge against what it says it should be there, and adjusting if appropriate. Okay, the other thing the engineer should do is he should check to make sure that the appliance does lock out. Um, there's a couple of ways, you know, does shut off um, if the pilot goes out. Depends how the pilot's set up. Um, you know, he can do it in a couple of ways. He can, um, he can just sort of 
block off the pilot flame. Oh, sorry, block off the pilot flame on one side if you can get at it. You know, with, you know, safely, um, so that then <clears throat> the thermocouple gets no heat and it locks off. He can block the oxygen hole um, on the pilot down here to see that it, uh, it the, the flame lifts and it it cuts out. So that's part of what he should be checking. Then. The engineer should be checking to make sure that the ventilation for the appliance is correct. Now, most of these flueless gas fires, there's very few that don't, need a ventilation hole in the wall, normally of 100 square centimetres of free air. What that means is that the grill that the air comes through needs to have holes that all add up to 100 square centimetres. Don't worry, it'll tell you in the, uh, in the um, appliance book how much uh, free air it should have and it should tell you on the ventilator how much free air it's giving. So that's another thing the engineer should check. The engineer will then put the whole thing back together once he's confirmed that it's set as it should be. Put the lid back on. He will then light it and run it for 10 minutes. It says different things in the book, um, you know, according to different manufacturers, because bear in mind you may have this type with a nice little pretty yellow flames, or you may have the one with the logs on it. There's all different kinds of fires, but the principles are all the same. So he's going to run it for 10 minutes. <clears throat> he's then going to get his flue gas analyzer, which is like when you have an MOT done. It's, um, it's basically, it sniffs what's coming out of the exhaust and it sees it's within safe limits. Now, <clears throat> when they do this for your boiler, you're allowed quite a bit of carbon monoxide coming out because obviously it's, it's, you know, it's out into the air. In this instance, you should be getting almost nothing. They'll probably tell you you can have 10 parts per million of carbon monoxide coming out. I like to see zero to one, because when these are actually operating nicely, and when they've warmed up, not when it first lights, but when it's warmed up after 10 minutes, um, you know, basically there should be nothing in terms of carbon monoxide coming out from here. Um, and again, the engineer should check that for a good length of time. So you should do a carbon, monoxide test for quite a length of time and I would advise when you have one of these to have uh, a carbon monoxide detector fitted just because if something goes wrong you haven't got the benefit of a flu I know these are more efficient but you haven't got the benefit of a flu so if anything goes wrong it can send it out into the room it doesn't the statistics because Americans have used these fires for a very long time statistically these fires are extremely safe however to be safe, B&Q, 15 quid, get yourself a carbon monoxide detector. Other than that, it's just the general condition. You yourself should know, to, to, you should know when it needs a service or when it has a problem because you'll see a funny flame picture. Um, you'll either see, you quite often see a little, little flame, one flame that's a little bit longer, you know, and you'll see little deposits of soot around the log or around the edge of the burner. Um, <clears throat> there's all different things you'll see, but you yourself will know if there's a problem with this. You'll also be able to see the black marks on the back if you, you know, if it's burning badly. And you can even, you can even get down and look up at the cats and if they're getting, if they're getting black, you know you've got a problem. You will also, carbon monoxide doesn't smell, but you will quite often smell if it's burning badly. Obviously get things serviced once a year, um, <clears throat> but these are good indicators. I mean the common one, there's a couple of these that have got little triangular blocks that sit over the flame and quite often they crack and they just, they'll just turn slightly. One will turn and you'll get a horrible flame running up there. That's bad. You're getting, you know, you're getting the wrong things coming out. Obviously the engineer will also, if he's got his analyzer going, he's likely to do um, a proper flue gas analysis, which means he's just gonna check the carbon monoxide, the carbon dioxide, and the free oxygen coming through. Again, the book, that the manufacturer's book you'll have got with this, um, get it out for him so he can check to make sure that he's, you know, he's in the limits that the manufacturer set. Because obviously he'll know his job, he'll know what it should be, give or take, but if he's got the specifics, it's much easier. There's a few of these where you're supposed to take the, um, the top off and clean the cat, but don't do it unless it says so in the book, because they're mostly self-cleaning. There we are, and again I'll say, this isn't a how to do it yourself guide, because this is, these are, with gas appliances, it's one of the things where um, you, you really can end up getting into deep trouble with them. Um, so 
So this is for you to see if your engineer is doing his job properly. So, in conclusion, he's going to be checking the gas pressure, he's going to be checking the safety devices, he's going to be cleaning it, he's going to be checking the cat, he's going to be doing a carbon monoxide test to make sure what products of combustion are coming through, and he's going to be checking the ventilation in the wall to make sure it's as it should be. There we are chaps, hope that helps.